All right guys, so a question that I've gotten on almost every single video is someone newer to the position or they are comfortable with that reverse arm lock. They're wondering why am I not just getting reverse arm lock from here or why is Gordon not getting reverse arm lock from that position? And so I'm gonna go over, I think it's five little uh, details uh, that I have planned for how we're preventing that. And not any of these are absolute rules they're more guidelines and some are going to be present while some are not at certain points because obviously this position is very dynamic and it's always going to be changing. So the position and the arm lock we're talking about here is I have my arm out to the side and just like Marcelo Garcia does, Kevin starts over under hooking this arm, separating, clamping down on my shoulder, hipping off to the side, pinning the shoulder and arm locking me. Anytime because we're taught uh, at a very early stage in our jiu-jitsu journey, if the hands are posted to the mat, then they become vulnerable and we start setting up kimuras, the reverse arm locks, etc. Not always the case, it all comes down to alignment, and alignment, once again, is our body's ability to generate and absorb force, and so we're looking at keeping ourselves in proper position so that this isn't possible. First, making sure our frames are load-bearing, so our arms are gonna be supporting a large part of our weight. There's no half measures here. If I half ass this and I stay at a certain range, but I put the weight into my legs, then my arms become light and they're going to be accessible as levers. So, Gordon talks about in this position, I'm putting the weight into my hands and I'm lifting my hips up. So I'm going to be able to leg pummel. That's the whole thing about this position. Now, with my frames being load bearing, Kevin is going to have a hell of a time breaking them down. Even if I shift my shoulders back a bit, but I still keep weight heavy in my hands, very difficult. Anything, anytime something, something is load bearing, it's going to be very hard for it, or it's going to take a lot more force to move it. Think about moving just one book along the ground, and then if you stack five more books on that book, then that bottom book becomes very difficult. So I need to shift a large part of my weight into my arms, and it's going to be very difficult. The problem that people have is they start reaching out too early, Something like this, and if the weight is still in my legs, kind of like a headquarters position, and now Kevin starts to break the shoulder down, all of a sudden it starts to become very easy to elevate off the mat, and that's where I'm gonna have a hard time. That's where, like, uh, especially if I'm kind of floating in this position and Kevin just elevates me a little bit with that butterfly hook and gets me just close with the hand, he's able to start capturing the arm. That's how Marcel Garcia sets this attack up all the time. So make sure you're committing your weight into your hands. So the second thing is making sure that our arms are properly angled as frames. So if my arm is straight up and down, my shoulder is supported under, over top of my elbow and my elbow is supported over top of my wrist. The positioning of our arm is gonna change at all times, so this is not an absolute thing, but if I'm reinforced like this, it's very hard for Kevin to access my arm as a lever, and now, as we talked about in the last uh, part, was keeping the weight into my arm so it's load-bearing, everything reinforces itself. So, if I'm in this position, my arm is pretty straight up and down, Kevin tries to break me down, look how he doesn't have anything to really grab onto here. Try and break it down. Nothing. He can't, he just, there's nothing to grip onto the shoulder, and the shoulder is immediately supported by my elbow. There's no way he's collapsing my bones. If I go like this, now you can see how a direct line underneath my shoulder, there's nothing there supporting it, and now my shoulder gets internally rotated, and I'm gonna have a bad time, okay? So we want to make sure that our arm is closer to our body. There's going to be, once again, this is an ever-changing thing. If my arm is super close to my body and my weight shifts this way, I don't have much for active posts. And my center of gravity will be shifted outside of my platform of base. So you'll absolutely see this happen where my arms are off to the side. But if I'm making sure that my arms are load-bearing, then it's still going to be very difficult for him to break that down. So if you feel that your arm is going to be collapsed, one of the things that we can start looking at is making sure that our arms are in the proper position. So the third thing that we're looking at is our arms in relation to our opponent's shoulders. And so usually we want to try and be at least at the shoulder line or higher up. And this is for tall guys, we're going to be able to abuse this even more to our advantage as we want to. Usually when we see this get hit against uh, opponents like, say, Marcel Garcia, once again, using this reverse arm lock. Kevin goes to sweep me, and then as I post, my arm is pretty low down to his shoulders, and so as he captures this, his elbows are able to stay nice and tight to his body, while my elbow is open up away from mine. The further my arms 
are posted on the mat above his shoulders, the higher he has to reach. So for me being six foot five, if I'm able to float up here, look how high Kevin has to try and reach to get at me. His elbows are so far away from his body right now that if he tries to break me down, much weaker. Kevin is stronger than me, no doubt about that. But if his elbows are open like this, he's not properly aligned to generate as much force as he's capable of. Even at shoulder level, slightly above shoulder level here, his elbow is more perpendicular to his body. He is a bit weaker and I'm able to properly have my arms load bearing as well as angle his proper frames. Very difficult. If my arms are angled up like this, yes, they're becoming more of a lever, but I have it above the shoulder line. So I'm affecting his alignment from him trying to break my arm down. So this is an instance where one of the guidelines is able to replace the other one. So don't feel like you have to have all of these in place at all times. As long as we understand that we're doing this effectively and we have a few of those ingredients, then we're going to be successful. So the fourth one is looking at still trying to pass before our arm is completely broken down. This is the least recommended one by me because if our alignment is uh, being compromised, it's, we should never be looking at advancing in range if we've lost a range battle. We should be looking at tactically retreating. But there are times that this can work before we have gotten into complete shit. If you look at Vinny Maglej versus Gordon Ryan, and I'll put the clip in right after this, is Vinny managed to hit this pass from a similar position when Ryan started hitting that razor arm lock or reverse arm lock. Really managing the range that effectively. If he knows how to manage the shoulder clamp really well, he's gonna be using this forearm across my neck, but there's not really anything blocking my body. Now, I'm not gonna try and pass if I'm completely broken down and he has started hipping out, putting a proper angle. I have no chance at that point. I fucked up a long time ago, as Kurt Hossiander would say. So here, as he starts to, I feel my shoulder is starting to give, I'm gonna be able to look at passing to that side with that kicking motion in part 10, where I'm gonna kick by here. By me freeing up my hips, even if he keeps uh, the shoulder clamp here, he doesn't have the proper angle now to access my arm as a lever. I'm gonna be able to move into a cross face. He needs to be able to isolate my shoulder as well as frame out my hips so that he's able to isolate my arm from my body. So not recommended most of the time, but as we get better and better at this position, we're gonna be able to make those judgment calls and pass during these cool moments. So as he starts looking to break this down, I'm looking to kick his leg back and start getting myself. The more I can get my hips back over to my elbow, the stronger I'm gonna be. And the fifth one is ultimately like, if everything is going bad for you, what I would recommend, and that's just retreating in the range. We have lost the range battle, back up slightly, however much you feel you need to, to recompose your alignment, and then we start moving ahead. So as I'm in this position, if I feel like Kevin's got a really good shoulder clamp here, I'm gonna start shifting the weight quickly into my legs and tucking my elbow back in. Here, looking to tuck the elbow in. His goal is to start internally rotating my shoulder and arm and pointing my elbow up to the sky, thumbs down. If I can turn my thumb back up, and open my palm up to the sky and close my elbow, then there's no arm lock. I'm in really strong structure here, which puts me in strong alignment. Here, he's trying to crush me down. I accelerate that movement and I go through that hole. If I wait until he collapses me and then try and move, well, I have nowhere to go. My shoulder is already pinned to his ribs and he's clamped the shoulder, he's controlling the elbow. I'm screwed. I feel that I'm getting collapsed here. And I collapse through and I go back to more of a headquarters position. So remember, as I talked about in one of the previous videos, headquarters and the King's Court are very similar in nature. King's Court is more weight into my hands and the uh, headquarters is more weight into my hips and legs. If this is the advancement, this is me moving forward. As he attacks the arm, this is me going backwards. Now I'm in strong alignment again. I can either look to pass from headquarters or I look to control the arms and then just move back and then adjust, making sure that I have proper weight into my hands, making sure that I have them at proper angles, making sure that they're above the shoulder line, then I'm gonna be successful. So make sure you keep yourself in proper alignment, no half measures, commit the weight into your hands, and you will be successful within this floating pass.